Uh, hello, this is a note on how to use the program Panoply to read net CDF files. In uh, marine weather, we normally work with GRIB data, but uh, periodically we have to use, um, for studies or studies of history or something, we have to use uh, net CDF data. And I have another note somewhere that I'll put online or link to that says uh, explains the occasions. The example we're working on now is we want to look at some archived uh, current, ocean current data. And uh, RTOF's model does not archive the data, but HICOM does. HICOM data archives, but they're in the pan they're in this uh, net CDF data mode. Okay, so that's that's the program we're going to use. You get it. You can Google a software panoply and find this page. There's download Mac and PC version. So then the other thing too is I wrote since I tried to do this before and I got kind of hung up. I uh, <laughs> multiple times hung up actually. So I made an article online about this, and this is a viewing this uh, weather files with Panoply, and so this is going to be the reference where you can go look at that and see some other things. But this is basically a video illustration of this article that's online, and so we're going to just start out and go to uh, uh, no, not downloads. Uh, 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 I'm going to get the file here, Courses, Emergency Navigation, uh, Currents, and then here's some data. Here's some, pan here's some net CDF. It ends in .nc. So I've just, and .nc on my computer I have assigned to Panoply. So that will open up that automatically. And this is what it looks like when a file opens in Panoply. Now, this is a very complex file, and this thing sorts it all out. And it'll be interesting. I'll show, maybe in a different video, I'll show how what a GRIB file looks like in the Panoply because it opens it all up and shows you then um, what's in it. And so here's the metadata of every everything that's in the file. And uh, this looks like we have data for, May, I think, only one date. Uh, zero zero Zulu July on uh, 2018 7:15. Okay, so let's just get straight to this, and then I'm going to. So uh, these are the. This is the vec U and V is the east west and the north south vector components of the current, and this is the way these grid files and the net CDF will present the currents and wind. Um, are always broken up that way, o almost always. There, there's, a, there's an exception. Some grip data is actually in magnitude and direction, but most is a U and V. And so what we have to do is combine these two. So let's start with the top one. You just highlight it. Then you click Create Plot. And then take everything that's default here. You can once we have the picture, you can then come back and play and do various things. You can do horizontal slices and look at things. That's interesting displays. But for now, we just do that, and that will bring up the picture. Now, so far, none of it looks right, and we're only looking at one component, the eastern component. So the first, that next thing you do is you come in. Now, if that were pressure in a grid file, we'd be done, because that's a scalar at only one value. Then we would just start working and make the picture look good. But we have to start here and make the vector. So then we take V, and this time hit Combine Plot, and then there's only one thing here, but if you have multiple files open, you have to be careful. There'll be multiple options that you're adding this to. We want to add, but here there's only one, so you say combine. So now we have both of them here. We have both of them here, and, uh, and so we have these tabs, and these tabs are how you, how you manipulate what you're seeing, right, along the bottom here. So we start out with the arrays. We have two, two arrays open, the U's and the V's, and if you want to, you can click that, and these are the raw data here. And this is, uh, this is the current speed, probably in meters per second, at, at strange units of latitude and longitude which we don't care about right now. And that's, that's the U component and the V component and so forth. And so that's here. So right now, the display we're looking at, we look at the plot map, uh, map, and it's a, they're subtracting the two. 
they're subtracting the two. That doesn't mean anything at all in this case. So we're going to come down here and take the bottom one called vector magnitude. And that's going to take u squared plus v squared and the square root of it. And that's, that is the length of the, uh, that's the current vector right there. Still all in kind of strange, strange display. So let's go. That's arrays. What else in array are we going to do? Not much. It's telling us we only have one data file here. We're talking about data at the surface. And we have one valid time, 00, zero Zulu. You can combine files. You can combine these files and then have, then you would step through the, just like you would a grid file, you would step through the various times or forecasts or whatever. So that's that. Now let's go to the scale file. And here's where we do some work to make it look right. Right now is u and v minus this to that. So let's go up here and, well, first of all, let's change the knots. Here's the unit scalar. Let's go here and change to knots. Bang. So now we're on knots. Now we know the minimum of the knots is going to be zero. So we can just make that zero. And, and then if we want to, now we can rely on our knowledge of ocean currents or you can just say fit to data. And when it fits to data, it says 2.38. You know, I know the world's got a Gulf Stream where there's bigger currents than that. So maybe this is just what we're looking at right here on this picture. So, but anyway, let's just for the time being, for the time being, we'll say we're going, we're going to look our color bar. We're going to go 0, 0 to 2.5, say, 2.5. And then to, to make that... Well, we hit someplace else or hit enter. Okay, so that's that. We still have strange writing here. We can change that down here. Uh, scale caption. Go to custom. And then let's put in um, uh, current speed. C-U-R-R. -R, current speed. And then uh, put KTS. Okay, so we got that fixed. Now, um, this... This vector here, we're not going to see any vectors if we're saying that this is 10.3. I mean, a 2.5 2 and 1 and 2, they're little dots, so they're not going to show up at all. So we have to fix that. We could fix that now if we want to. Uh, let me see where we do that. Um, that would be vectors, maybe? Uh, yeah, my vectors. Let me change that to 1.0, enter. Okay. 1.0 inner. So we've got that. Now we have vectors that we understand. So let's come back here now and finish up on this page. Um, what else do we have? Scalars. Now this, these divisions along here, 2.3, 1.8, that's kind of odd. And we want these divisions to be nice numbers because the contours up here are defined by the tick marks that are here. So let's take that Take this here, tick mark format, and change that to five, say. You, you can experiment. Oh, turn, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I got that. Okay, so that's 2.5. So now, each of these contours are going to be at, there's going to be a contour at 1, at 0.5, at 1.5, and so on. So that all looks pretty good. Let's see if there's anything else on this page we need. The tick formats, I'll come back to that. These are strange unit. Ah, oh, I just clicked some weirdness. These, these are, <laughs> this is a strange format here. And you want uh, 1F, I think one decimal place, yeah. And then in the article, let's see where, let me just show you now here. I don't think we need that anymore. I don't need that. In the article, at the end of the article, here at the end of the article, there are notes. There are notes here about what, this, what these weird formats mean. Right, so you do percent dot x and f. Now that's going to show you this number. This is one, right? But if I put zero here, if I okay, let me get you back on the picture here. If I put this to zero f, is there a zero f? Yeah, zero f. It looks like that, right? Or if I went here and put you at two f. That's going to be, two, that's it, okay, it's like that. So that's the way that works. You just play with that. What is really practical is like 1F.
And then we got that one knots. And so we're there. Refer to the article for what those things mean. I think we're done now. Let's see what else. This, la this label's still not right. It's not eastward water velocity anymore. Uh, we would go here to labels and probably change that to uh, high com, you know, currents. Uh, and then I would just say 00 Z. Zero, zero, July 15th, 2018, or some kind of label. Plus, you can put all kinds of labels. All right, the vectors, we've done that. I think we've got our picture. Now, we need to make it uh, home in on what we want. And um, there, I will refer you back to these uh, keystrokes right here that is list, uh, that are listed in the article and unfortunately the if you go up to the up to the top here under the plot there's a couple of them it says zoom in and zoom out uh, it also reminds you uh oh what did i do i don't know i zoomed out or something um, it reminds you you can make these pictures really big or different aspect ratios and so forth and um, but so we want to look at these what the circles are and the, and if we want to set this up for some place in particular this you could go down here and just say now I can do it different ways right I can go here option command I'm on a Mac so you'd have to read the article see the PC equivalent uh, option Mac and minus so I can just kind of like zoom out. Suppose I wanted to go to, oh, there's Hawaii right there. So there's that Hawaii. Then I can do like right click, no, yeah, right click and drag, and then zoom into here. But as soon as you do anything like that, you have to go back to the map and fix proportions. Fix proportions. Because we, we didn't uh, do anything that matches the projection properly. And here are the different projections. You can play with those, but you'll find probably that this is the most convenient. There is a Mercator projection. There's all sorts. Well, there they are. They go on. Uh, and so those you just play with, but it, once you have a way to look at the data, then you can always uh, do fancier things. Also on the maps, but we could, for example, you have to remember that in this system, like most mathematics or computer treatment of maps, uh, north is a plus, south is minus, and what might not be thought of is that Western longitudes are minus. So if I want to like center this on Hawaii, I would have to put in here a minus, minus 156, and then say 20, right? If I, and that's like 20 north. So that's going to be Hawaii. And then let's say I want the picture to be, oh, I don't know, 10 degrees wide and 10 degrees tall, something like that. Okay, now something like that. And then I'm going to have to say fix proportions. So then that's a way you can do that. Or you can always just uh, left click, you know, left click. And I, uh, no, I got option command and left click. And then you can just go out. And then you get out. Say I want to look at the Gulf Stream. Then I can go over here and then right click and drag here. And, and so forth, but fixed proportions again, like that. Then the other way that you can pan around is shift, shift, and left click there. And that's just going to center, like if we want to center on this eddy right there, I could do that, center on that. Now the other one, and I think it's just plain, you look at this, I want to read the data. Option plus left click. You see here, option plus left click. Option plus left click. I read the current right there. 2.3 knots. And you see, remember that last picture we said, what's the fit data? Fit data. That actually must have meant fit data in the window because we know Gulfstream has over three knots many places. Okay, so that's that. And then again, you can zoom in like this. And then again, once you do that, fix proportions. Now then, you can export this picture. You can export this picture as a PNG file, or you can you go up here to uh, you go up to the top under Panoply under I don't know if this shows up in the image or not. Save as, and you can save the image as 
uh, and then you can export the data or you could uh, do a uh, KMZ export a KMZ they look really nice in uh, they look nice in the Google Earth so that's the that's the process of displaying currents in uh, in the panoply and I'll come back and uh, do one on the grip files in a minute